So just yesterday, we reported that Microsoft wins the fight against the FTC to buy Activision Blizzard. All is said and done. Well, not exactly, as it looks like the FTC has one last stitch effort that they're looking to implement right now against Microsoft to not let this merger happen. I feel like right now that the FTC is like Anakin, Revenge of the Sith, when he gets left on Mustafar to die, he's yelling at Obi-Wan, which would be Microsoft being like, so what is this last stitch effort the FTC is pulling on Microsoft for this acquisition? And what is the likelihood of it being blocked still? Well, if you guys like these news and informational videos, make sure to tap that like button. It's the best way to help out the video channel within the all famous YouTube algorithm. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with gaming news, well, make sure you tap subscribe and let's get right into those details. So in an article written by The Verge right here, excellent source, I've been writing some great stuff about this entire situation, saying the FTC appeals its loss to Microsoft in Activision Blizzard case. Effectively, what they're doing is they're trying to get a second opinion on this is what really what they're trying to do because for some reason they have this like it seems like almost like a vendetta against microsoft and acquiring activision blizzard saying this is bad for everything but then the judge is like no literally they said they want to actually bring their games to more platforms even the ceo of microsoft said that he doesn't like exclusivity in which they can have their games on multiple platforms but the reason why they are exclusive in the first place because this is the environment that they are in right now and you need to have exclusives to give people a reason why to buy into your platform. Now that could just be posturing and pointing fingers at PlayStation and Jim Ryan, but exclusivity has always been a thing within gaming. The judge overlooking the case even said that the court finds the FTC has not shown a likelihood it will prevail on its claim. This particular vertical merger in the specific industry may substantially lessen competition effectively just saying like yeah it's not gonna be you know the end all be all for a lot of these companies it's just a, a good merger and to the contrary the record evidence points to more consumer access to call of duty and other activision bits of content this is in reference to what they were saying about one possibly bringing call of duty to the next switch platform whatever the next nintendo platform is going to be rumored to have a much as much power as say like an Xbox One or PS3, but being very similar to the Switch, which would make sense as the Switch is insanely popular. Like there's, there is, you know, Nintendo Switch and its sales, and then you have Sony and Xbox. Like that's kind of like, Nintendo's have been its own thing. And within this court case, Bobby Kotick even said like, if this merger does happen, they would consider bringing Call of Duty to the Switch, expanding its accessibility. But why would PlayStation stress about this then? Even if Xbox stated that they still want their game on their platform? Well, since it would be a technically an Xbox branded game, right? The PlayStation would have to play Xbox royalties to have access to that game, which is what PlayStation has been doing with xbox this whole time phil spencer even mentioned this saying that basically what playstation was doing it was charging an extra charge to have xbox titles on the playstation which would make sense for accessibility but then using that extra charge to come back around to call of duty to be able to get this exclusivity that playstation has with like different bits of content early access and things like that so xbox was kind of caught in a catch-22 of damned if you do damned if you don't kind of situation so as the ftc goes for its appeal on a different court just to get another opinion on the whole situation the emergency stay to extend this kind of extends the current block that's on this whole thing right now so it's not officially completed at the moment but it did state that it's likely to expire by friday july 14th and it's unlikely that the court will be able to find a new ruling by july 18th and by that point it's okay for microsoft and activision blizzard to close the deal here in the u.s in fact the president of blizzard had a little bit of a quip back at the FTC, essentially saying here, your tax dollars at work. Essentially saying that the FTC is wasting their time, FTC is wasting their own time, and ultimately wasting your tax dollars on pursuing this, which most likely will still be approved to continue on forward. It feels more like the head of the FTC just really just has like this vendetta against large tech companies and seeing that this is a merger that create one larger company, true, but will it actually directly affect competition within the gaming sphere? Well, it will have some shakeups, yes, but it doesn't mean that Sony won't be viably competitive. 
Nintendo will still be just fine. I don't see anything changing on the Nintendo side of things. This is just a bit of a shakeup, some waves being created. Interesting thing though, the deal with Microsoft and the CMA over in the UK instantly announced that they agreed to it, pause their legal battles to negotiate after this FTC judge ruling. So the CMA is like, okay, we'll hear you out again, Microsoft, when it comes to this acquisition. And if you want to change your setup a little bit when it comes to specifically cloud games, which was holding Microsoft up in this whole process, which I think is a good thing looking for Microsoft, Activision Blizzard, and King. Don't forget King's involved with this as well. One of the most popular mobile games out there. It seems like with each passing day, this merger is more and more likely to happen. Specifically about the cloud gaming, what the UK is having issues with, with the EU regulators also had cloud gaming concerns, but approved the deal earlier this year, thanks to a 10 year licensing deals that Microsoft has offered to cloud gaming competitors. Yes, we'll allow our Xbox house to be on other cloud services, which is pretty much the main thing that they have issues with. Again, it's a 10 year license. We'll see what happens after 10 years, obviously. Also saying right here that the Microsoft's deal with the EU included a key remedy that involves a free license to consumers in EU countries that will allow them to stream via any cloud game streaming service of their choice all current and future Activision Blizzard PC games and console games that they have a license for. Cloud providers will also be offered a free license to stream these games. I mean, this is effectively easing any concerns with cloud gaming. Microsoft's like, yes, we'll do that. At least for 10 years, we'll see what happens. Again, that's so far in the future. No one really knows what the gaming landscape is gonna be like in 10 years. We can have some plans and some well thought out ideas, but ultimately it's up to the consumers and people who wanna play whatever game is popular on whatever platform. Even though one of the Xbox leads, Sarah Bond, did say that current xCloud services is actually their least used feature at Xbox, where she said that mainly people are using xCloud as a way to play their games while they wait for it to download. Yeah, it's kind of understandable as the experience of cloud gaming, which is really cool. And I think it is involving the future of gaming in some capacity. It's just not where it needs to be right now. At the moment, there's that latency, especially when it comes to shooters or any kind of thing that involves like pinpoint accuracy. It doesn't matter if it's like a single player campaign or if it's a racing game, a shooter game, whatever, that latency really gets in the way of experiencing your games. And if 10 years down the line, Xbox and Microsoft can figure out a way to improve their latency on xCloud, we could see it become a much more prominent service. It definitely will be used much more in outside the US areas or places that are a little bit less fortunate than say like the UK or EU or any kind of developed nations where they want to play say like Halo, but they're like in Fiji or something. I only mentioned Fiji because I was brought up in an example during this court case because Xbox kind of has xCloud as an idea of way to get much more of that international market which they've struggled with for so long. Hopefully with this Activision Blizzard King merger, they will help them get a better foothold outside the United States when it comes to their market share. Ultimately, is this something to stress about? Do you think anything is really going to change about this? I don't think so. This is capitalism one-on-one. The big fish is getting eaten by an even bigger fish. So in the United States, I don't see anything changing right now. It's all about the CMA and cloud gaming for this to be a clean merger. But once this deal is finalized, I'll let you guys know here on the channel.